Hi friends, I'm excited to be here with you today to share a layout for Mixed Media Monday. I started by cutting some, three of the geometric shaped um, Hip Kip Club dies, and I'm going to be using those here in a minute, but first I'm going to build my background for Mixed Media Monday. And I'm starting with Catherine Pooler ink on that background, and I just put it down on the back. That's called It's a Girl, and it is from one of the past Hip Kits. And, or kit, kit, color kits and so I just rubbed that you could see just splotted it on the background and then added some water and then this is um, one of the Nouveau sprays that was in a past color kit as well and I do have a photo at the end that has a picture of all of this so you can see the names of everything and um, snapshot that if you would like to so this I at once the ink was on there from the ink pad then I just sprayed that Nouveau spray on there and I'm moving it around with water I'm kind of trying to get an even <laughs> coating not exactly perfect obviously but uh, I want it to move around that page so that it's got good coverage there in the middle and then I did set that off to the side to dry for a little while and now I'm going back and adding this is a Gina K ink I think and I'm adding that to a Hip Kit Club stamp from one of the past kits. Now I'm adding some Catherine Pooler ink because I did want to <clears throat> have a couple of varied colors there. So I'm stamping that down and that I'm just stamping it kind of on the top left corner and the bottom right corner. And I just kind of want that peeking out. I'm gonna be adding a whole bunch of other stuff to it. So I wanted that peeking out there. And now I am using a stencil from one of the past Hip Kit Club kits. And I just keep all of my stencils, dies, stamps from Hip Kit together. So they're all, um, they're all there. I think this one, I can't remember which month this is from. But it is a beautiful, almost like a medallion kind of looking stencil. So I used a uh, texture paste, Ranger's uh, Matte Opaque Texture Paste and I put that down and then I let it dry. So I did sit it off in between. You can't tell that I did that, but I did sit it off to dry. So I let it dry um, really well. And then I'm just going back with an ink pad and splotting it. I put the stencil back down and then I just went back with that same little ink pad and blotted on top of it. You could do that with an ink blending brush. Uh, if, you have, if you have like larger ink pads that you're using, you could easily do that with an ink blending brush or an ink blending tool. I'm just doing it with the ink pad because it's easy to do. And now I'm adding a little bit of water before it dries really well because I kind of want it to be, you know, a little bit messy. So I did add a little bit of water to it. And I'm also going back and adding a little bit of water to those stamped images. They are pretty well set, but they do still react to water. That Catherine Polar ink is fantastic at reacting to water. So. did that and then here I'm cutting off the edges because I want it to kind of have a more organic edge so I am cutting kind of around it and then I am gonna you'll see I do end up cutting off some more little pieces of it as I go and I was kind of playing around with how I wanted it to look across the middle I do end up changing it just a little bit this is a piece of patterned paper. It's the B side of a piece of patterned paper from the January main kit. I love that. It looks like a ledger, like a pink ledger. And here I'm cutting up my photo. I did have three photos that I printed on a piece of four by six photo paper. So each one of those is about two by three. <clears throat> That's not right. Two by four, sorry. Two, two inches by four inches, and I did trim off some of the, a little bit of the length. So it's a little bit under the four inch length. And then I backed those, I cut them apart, backed them in a very, very thin layer of white cardstock. I just like the cardstock, the white to help it set it apart from the background, but I didn't want it to make a huge statement, so it's a very, very thin layer. And then I cut a piece of that ledger paper. I am going to use my Tim Holtz edge distressor to rough up the edges of that. If I had wanted to leave that uh, those edges perfect, I would have used my paper trimmer to cut it. But since I knew I was going to rough up the edges, I just used my scissors to cut it out really quickly. 
and then I'm going to kind of see where those photos are going to go. And then I will be between the photos and that piece of pink ledger paper, I am going to end up using those die cut images. And I love this die from Hip Kit. Love all of those shapes and the texture that that adds. So I am just adhering it right in the middle. <clears throat> I'm gonna trim off some excess, kind of roughly. I want it to look a little rough there. And I'm just piecing it together using those same three that I cut. I only cut three of those images and I'm piecing that together to have it hanging off of that paper because I love the texture that it adds. So now before I glue my photos down, I am going to pop those up on some craft foam. And I do adhere down the outside pictures first, trying to line those up. Luckily there's a ledger paper on the back, so it's easy to see where the lines are, make sure they're straight and lined up. But I did do the outsides first and then the, the middle photo last, just so I know that I can get good placement. So I know uh, where it needs to go and and how much space in between. Hopefully that makes sense. It's easier to get the, the middle picture with even spacing if you do it last. And so now I'm gonna adhere down the hole. I thought about putting another piece of patterned paper behind there, but it was getting a little too busy, <laughs> if that's really possible. I love, more is more for me, uh, but it did seem a little too much, so I left off that other patterned paper. And I forgot to mention, I did cut those dies, those die shapes with pink cardstock from the cardstock kit, the January cardstock kit. So it coordinates perfectly with the colors in, in the layout. And my challenge for this layout today um, that I was assigned was a monochromatic layout. So if you know me, you know I love lots of color and to have lots of varied colors on a paper. So. I, this was a good challenge for me and I had fun still adding all of the textures and patterns and layers that I always add, but all, I tried to keep it all within that same color family. So it is a, I was going with pink, it was my monochromatic color here. So I pulled lots of things from the January kits in that color family. Um, it did, this is a kind of a purpley pink that I'm using. So the patterned papers and the embellishments in the January kit were, that pink is a, leans a little bit purple. So um, the inks and things that I had used on the background were very, very pink. So I'm going back with the inklings that's in the January color kit this month. And I'm adding that on top of all of that pink. So because this is a better shade, it's a perfect match. So what Hip Kit Club does so well is match all of those colors together. And so that inklings is perfectly coordinated with the patterned paper. So I added that on top, but you still do see the depth of color and variation of color, which adds great, um, great visual interest to the layout. So I still have some of those pinks, those darker pinks and things poking out through that inklings. And here what I'm doing is I'm cutting out some flowers from that beautiful patterned paper from the January main kit. So I'm just cutting out the pink ones. There's also kind of like a peachy color flower and then lots of colors of smaller flowers, but I'm just using the pinks. And then here I did use another of the hip kit dies to cut leaves. That was from um, October or November, those dies. I can't remember exactly where those were from, maybe December. But they're just leaves, and so I cut those with white cardstock because I was really trying to stick with the, the pink and the white for my, for my colors. And then that sticker that I'm adding, that's one of the chipboard stickers from the Project Life Kit, and it says Childhood Memories. And then the title and then I put love this was what I'm going down right now and then that title kind of to the bottom right of the photos it says woke up to a good life so I thought that was a fun title for these photos of my sweet girl in her bike helmet 
and scooter helmet. And so now what I'm doing, I have fussy cut a bunch of flowers from the different patterned papers from the January main kit and used some of the flowers from one of the ephemera. There's a floral ephemera set. It was either in the, I think it was in the embellishment kit this month. So I pulled out some flowers from that. So I just pulled out uh, pinks, all the different pinks, and then a couple, a few white flowers as well. And I am, if you've seen me do a process video or heard my descriptions before, you know that when I'm adding florals to a layout, I love to um, bend up the edges, bend up all of those petals, fold them up, because it helps it look more like a real bouquet. I never leave flowers flat on a background, or flat on a layout, I always, always bend them up, because it adds great texture and visual interest. So here I've got all of the pink florals and I'm tucking in those white leaves that I die cut here and there. So I'm building one cluster sort of to the top right of those photos and then I'm gonna be doing one down below as well, a cluster kind of around that title underneath the photos. Definitely was a challenge to not have a whole bunch of green leaves in there. I did leave a few of the green stems and leaves on the flowers just because they would have looked weird without having <laughs> something attached to them. So um, I did, there's just a few little green pieces, but mostly I used, there were some pink leaves in the ephemera set, in the floral ephemera set, uh, several different like little sprigs of pink leaves. So I pulled those out and used them and then the white, the white leaves that I cut. So here I'm building another little cluster underneath the photos. And you can see that the mixed media that I added is sort of to the right of where, like the bottom right of where this cluster is gonna be. And then the texture paste that I added is to the top left of the floral cluster at the top. So that's still, that great texture and visual interest is still poking out, but it's not overwhelming the layout because it's all monochromatic. I painted it kind of all the same color. So it does blend well into the background, but it still adds in real life when you're looking at the layout, it adds lots of great detail. And you can still see all of the different pinks that I used on that background. So I didn't fully cover everything up with the inklings, but I did get pretty good coverage over it. <clears throat> so there I finished my cluster of flowers. And so now what I'm doing is I'm gonna add some journaling. I'm just adding some lines with my pencil, kind of eyeballing where I want it to go. By adding those lines in pencil, you can't erase when you make a mistake, so I was able to do that. And then I'm just adding the journaling about um, how much fun it is to watch my sweet girl on her scooter and her bike. And I love these, I love these pictures of her, of her face and how happy she is. And I don't always add journaling to my layouts. I do often. Sometimes I go back and do it after uh, I've posted a picture or posted a layout. I'll go back and add journaling. But I do love to always add the date. So I made sure and added the date down there. Even when I don't add journaling, I try to always add the date to whatever the photo is. So someday when I'm long gone, <laughs> hopefully someone keeps all of these scrapbooks that I'm making. Um, and they'll be able to see the dates on those memories. Okay, so what I did here is I pulled some of the sequins from the, um, the embellishment kit, the December embellishment kit, and I there were some um, floral sequins in there, little white flower sequins. So what I'm doing is I am adding those around my, my clusters of flowers, using, and I'm attaching them to the layout using a knot stitch, so a French knot stitch. So that's where you just pull the thread up from the back 
you poke it through and then you wrap the thread around the needle about three times and then you poke it down through the same hole and it adds the little French knot to the middle of the sequin. So there are lots of YouTube videos on how to add that French knot. So if you, if you're interested in that, you can see that. And then I am adding a few sequins just to the middle of flowers here. Using the same stitch, so that French knot stitch. And it's very simple once you kind of get the hang of it, it's a very simple stitch to perfect for sure. <clears throat> And it, all, again, adds a different texture and different detail, um, and I love that. And then here around these cluster, the floral clusters, I'm gonna go and add some more of the pink sequins that were from that sequin mix in the past embellishment kit. And I have used those sequins from that kit on lots of layouts now. <laughs> There's just so many in there. It was a great, was a great amount of sequins, so I've used them on lots of different layouts. Still going strong on that collection of sequins for sure. So I'm just adding them in little clusters and then I did off camera add a few little crystals and sequins from my stash. And then I also added a few little um, drops of I think they're pink liquid pearls and then now I'm adding Nuvo drops and these are from the November extravaganza color kit I think is what it was called. But these silver Nubo drops are from that November kit. And I'm just adding those kind of to the edges of some of those flowers to add a little bit of shine and shimmer and to the centers of the flowers. So here I bring it close up so you can see what I've done there. Lots of different textures and levels and layers. You can still see that texture paste there to the side. Hopefully you have enjoyed watching my process here on the Hip Kit channel. If you did, you can go ahead and give it a like. We would appreciate that. And then also you can tap the bell for notifications for future layouts. I do have a link below to the kits if you would like, if you're interested in purchasing those. And you definitely will not be disappointed. And we do post a new video every day, so you can tap the notification for new new videos and we're thankful that you watched the channel and hope you will watch our future videos. Have a great day guys. Bye.